for a lot of you, the name Johan Nieskens is a name that you'll know as a former Mami Lodi Sundowns coach. But let me just give you a little bit more to the footballer that was Johan Nieskens. A man who won what is now the Champions League three times with the Ajax. Then he's a man who's been in the FIFA World Cup in the final, the final match on two occasions, scoring in one of those finals. He then played for Barcelona. Yes, he's a Barcelona former player and then has gone on to even coach Barcelona, being a assistant coach of the Dutch national team. And one of those men that we can honestly say gave us football as it is today. 1974, they brought into the world something called total football, where the world was not even playing football like that. But Johan Nieskens was one of the pioneers of bringing what we know as football today to us. Johanna. It's good to have you in the studio with us. Before we talk about you, though, what brings you to South Africa? I know Betway, the 12th Man campaign, looking uh, to uplift legends of football. What are you doing here with Betway and 12th Man? Yeah, first of all, it is great to be back uh, again, and especially also with this uh, program. I think uh, they try to support the legend, mm. where a lot of people went to the stadium to see them. And now they are more or less more in an unfortunate situation. Mm. But also Betway and of course the legend, uh, Lucas Reverde, they give an opportunity. So they did, an, uh, still it is going on for six months, that is a project mm. where they want to see where are the skills of these people. There were five ladies who played for the national team of Van Yes, let me just tell South Africans, Porsche Mudise, Figile Sitole, Cabo Zita, Gloria Salela, Smongile Kumalo, those are the five uh, former Banyana Banyana women who are now on a course with you, and they were allowed to bring another coach along with them yes. from their community. Yes. Those are the five women. With the men, it's Steve Lecolea, Edwin Puntales, Steve uh, Sicalo, Andres Mpondo, Maimani Piri. They also got to bring another coach from the community so you can help them to get their D license. Yeah, because they went through a lot of items and topics that say, where are the skills of these people? Because not everybody makes it maybe as a, as a football coach. Mm. But they did with a lot of experience from, from other people, uh, let's say broadcasting or uh, social media, uh, finances, mm. uh, maybe a, a club manager or an administrator. Why do you like the Betway 12 Man program so much? Yeah, but that is fantastic because they gave people the opportunity maybe to have a chance to come back in, in, in the community mm. and be something and mean something for them mm. also. So, and now they, they have it, and, and we are here um, uh, of the invitation of Bedway, and we work together with the two instructors of SAFA, what we, with the KNVB, we work very closely together, and that is great, with the knowledge of us, with SAFA together, to bring that over to these players. What I want to do now is pick <coughs> your brain a little bit. Total football. Mm -hmm. What comes up in your minds in 1974 where football was played by the striker stays there, the midfielder doesn't cross this line, the defender never comes over the halfway line. Your Dutch team in 1974, the one that you played in, changed the game. How did you come up with everybody can do anything? Yeah, but that is the, the work of the coach. At that time, we had the coach, uh, Mr. Michels. And he was already with Ajax since 65, 66. Mm. And he worked on that team many years, till around... They were already uh, one time in the final, but they lost 4-1 against AC Milan with scoring Prati three goals. And then the, the, the year after, Feyenoord won the champion. And then in the 1970, it was the first time, and I was part of it, that we win on Wembley against the Greek team, Panathinaikos, 2-0. Mm. But then also in that, then that season, the team started because Michels was finding players who can put pressure on the half on very deep high. Uh, on the half of the opponent, every every day we worked on that, on that. But a lot of movements. You 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 attack, another one take your position and defend. The right fullback overlaps me as a midfield player. No one was doing this in the world, eh? No. And 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 at that time the the offside uh, was also different. So we played nearly to the midfield, uh. but also sometimes Barcelona does. And then with fantastic strikers with Cruyff, Rep. Ransomring, uh, 
uh, uh, Kaiser. That is unbelievable. When you win the ball then, and they with the quality one against one, we scored a lot of goals. The same like Ajax does. Ajax now with one game to go. They have played 33 games in the league and they scored 115 times. And you, uh, people say, were the first, amongst the first anyway, box-to-box -box midfielders. Mm -hmm. No one had done, I'm going to run from that end of the field up to the other side of the field. Yeah, but that is uh, the, the 90 minutes. And I love it because I think you have skill, but you have to work also. And you do it for the team, not only for myself, but you're a team player. And of course, you have also other players. I was a lucky man to play seven years with Johan Cruyff. Mm. For me, at that time, the best player in the world. But he had so much football knowledge because you prepare yourself for the game. And the coach says, this is this. We are five minutes in the game and maybe the opponent has changed something. He saw it and he said, hey. You more up, you more down. Now we're going to play. Coaching on the field. Yeah. Now, back in the 70s, Johan Nierskens moves to Barcelona. And if you look here closely, he's got that like rock star look, you know. And the word I get is back then, uh, Johan, the ladies loved you. They were, you were like a superstar, Barcelona. You had the rock star looks, the long hair. I want to know how it is that. We have a situation where footballers get distracted by that, by being superstars. How were you able to cope? No, I think that is for every person individual, how you deal with it. Of course, if you are in the picture and uh, on television and on the field, of course uh, they like you more. But is it more because you are uh, famous at that time, because you are in a big team and you come a lot of time on television, or is it real? that they like you as a person. Yes, so, but it doesn't matter because the no, distraction know, but, but, is still there for but, the footballer. Yeah, but, but you have to deal with it and you have to make the right choices. What is the, how do you deal? What do you do? Yeah, okay, what you do, that, that depends on yourself, but depends also, hey, do you have already a girlfriend or not? Or do you have a wife or not? Well, uh, that is the things that you have to think about and that you have children or whatever. So, yeah, every does his own thing. Now, let's talk about a penalty and a World Cup final. Two yeah. minutes into a game, <laughs> and you'd pick up the ball and go and take that penalty? Yeah. No, because uh, it was already decided. I took uh, also the year before all the penalties with playing for Ajax. And then when the coach, uh, Michels, he did then also the national team in that time. So he said straight away, you are number one by taking, and another one the number two. The difference is, I, I scored in two penalties against Bulgaria in one game. Mm -hmm. And one I have to repeat because two players went too quick in the box. And I did it more or less the same way. So from the middle, right from the goalkeeper, half high but very hard. Okay, that was my style. Yeah. And then you play the final. Not even two minutes, penalty. West okay. Germany. West Germany. Okay, you are very confident. You start, but you only touch twice the bell. You are not really into the game. You're not even warm. No. So I lay the ball and then I started thinking because I have to be honest. I start thinking, same corner, same, or do I change? No, no, no. <laughs> I do the same. While I was running, I tried to change <laughs> instead of going from that side to the other side. And then my steps were not good out because if you Depends also on your feet where you're standing uh, on, which way it goes. If I want straight through the middle, it goes to. If I want to there, it has to be a little bit to there. So I hit it very hard, a little bit in the ground also, <laughs> and it went straight to the middle. But Sepp Meyer saw maybe the videos and saw these penalties, and he was speculating that I kicked the so same he way. So he left also <laughs> earlier and he went. So a so lucky goal. A lucky goal. <laughs> I have to be honest. Because if he stands still, maybe <laughs> the ball was very hard. Maybe he goes with ball and all in the net. I uh. don't know, but he would catch it. And after that, it is funny because then the next World Cup, maybe somebody takes the penalty similar and they say, ah, Alan Eskens, like he took all the time this, this kind you of penalty. You were thinking about it, but meanwhile, yeah. I changed my mind on my way. Yeah. Oh, God, kick it, yeah. mistake. Tell me about Messi. Iniesta, Ronaldinho, coaching players like I, that? I think that is where every trainer dreaming of, 
to work with these players. You don't have to learn them to Teach how nothing. to stop the ball, how to pass, because that they know, that they know. So what's but your job? The most important thing is to bring all noses in the same direction, that there is a hierarchy. Can all the players deal with it or thinks one, he is better than the other one? Uh -huh. And that is a very big problem and that is sometimes that existed. Is that, that the that job of the coach? Yeah, when you've got players of that quality, quality, your job is just to manage the ego. Yeah, and that you have to find a good balance all with them that, yeah, we have to attack, but everybody has to do the job when they are defending also, when it is necessary. And, and that is the, the, the toughest what you have, because the crowd loves some people, uh, some players, and maybe if he doesn't do his work, they don't see it really. We yeah. only see the nice things. We, we look a different way. Johan, it's an absolute pleasure to have had a chance to speak to you. One of the greatest footballers ever to kick the ball. And I think the Betway 12th man, the legends who are on the course with you, are lucky to have your experience uh, and you giving them that uh, coaching for their D license. It is a pleasure uh, to be here and I hope that it is not the last time. No, we can't allow it to be the last time because we've got plenty more stories we need to get out of you. Johan Nieskens. Thank you.